Hello my dear students. Today we will learn a very beautiful poetry by John Keats and the name of the poem is A Thing of Beauty. Before we go into the word to word explanation of the poetry, let us know a few more details about John Keats. He was born on 31st October 1795 in central London and he and he died in the year 1821 in Rome. He belongs to second generation of romantic period and John Keats died at very young age of 26 because of tuberculosis and in English literature it is said that he was last to be born and the first to die because of his early demise. If we go into the nature of the poet, we find he was extremely imaginative and sensitive and sensuous poet. At the age of 15, he was an apprentice to a surgeon, but he abandoned the medical profession in order to become a poet. And in his poetry, we find beauty. Okay, he was a true worshipper of beauty. A thing of beauty which is in our syllabus is an excerpt from his poem, his epic poem, Endymion. It is a poetic romance. The poem is based on a Greek legend in which Endymion, a beautiful young shepherd and poet who lived on Mount Latmus, had a vision of Cynthia, Cynthia the moon goddess. The enchanted youth resolved to seek her out and so wandered away through the forest and down under the sea. Through this, the poet depicts human soul's quest for ideal beauty. Endymion stands for the poet as a man and Cynthia stands for ideal beauty. When we see literary contribution of John Keats, we find numerous work of him but I have included few and those are two psyche odd on melancholy odd on a Grecian urn odd to autumn odd to nightingale imitation of a Spencer etc now let's see the structure of the poem the poem is written in couplet a couplet is a pair of two lines with rhyming end words for example made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall here all and pall these are rhyming therefore it is couplet students the theme of the poetry is a thing of beauty is joy forever now here beauty for me it can be flower sun moon Okay, for you, it can be a structure, some structure like Taj Mahal, alright, or any monument, okay, or any person. So, it differs, but whatever it is, it is for ever, because its beauty never dies. Now, second point says that even if we are suffering from some disease and we are very much disappointed in our life, it is beauty which cures all our disease it is beauty which gives us relief from our depression okay it uplifts our spirit students now you can have a look at the words and difficult words and its meanings I will explain each and every words meaning while making the explanation let's read out few of the lines first of all a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bower quiet for us and asleep, full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. Therefore, on every morrow are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Here, the poet says, a thing of beauty provides eternal and everlasting joy to human beings because it leaves an indelible imprint in our mind and we relieve the joyful experience whenever we think about it. Students, 
to understand this i'll give you one example when we are very much depressed doctors suggest us to go to some place which is close to nature especially hill station in hill station or nature they find relaxation peace and when they come back after a couple of days that memory remains in their mind and that memory gives them eternal happiness always that never dies its loveliness increases in this line the poet says joy multiplies with every beautiful thought likewise the loveliness beautiful thing increases each time we visualize it on our mind and the joy a beautiful thing provides is eternal it is immortal the imprint it leaves on our mind is everlasting thus its loveliness can never fade away or die out the poet feels that a thing of beauty can never fade into nothingness but will always store for us a quiet bower or a shady place which is which provides us sleep full of sweet dreams and a healthy quiet breathing quiet breathing implies the sense of peace and serenity that one experiences on seeing beautiful things students beautiful sights act like nutrition for a healthy mind and thus refreshes and relaxes us by driving away aggression and restlessness students life on earth would be a pain without the beauty around us so the poet feels that every morning we weave or we bind a wreath of flowers okay with which we connect with nature it is a bonding that we create with nature which gives us joy which gives us happiness let's read out other few lines spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble natures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching yes in spite of all some shapes of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirits such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon spite of despondence in this line students the poet sees life as a struggle where man often suffers pain and loss of hope the expression refers to the sufferings and hopelessness of man which he experiences at various junctures in life by inhuman dearth of noble natures we understand that man is very selfish and self-centered by nature there are only a few who enjoy such nobility of character as to rise above their petty differences right and show generosity on this earth there is surely a dearth or shortage of such noble souls and in life we struggle for success our path towards success gets obstructed by the deceit and selfishness of our colleagues we suffer the pangs of defeat and loss of hope which makes our life sad and disdainful of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways the poet wants to tell us students that human life is full of trials and tribulations now and then they have to pass through dark phase of life and these dark phases are meant for human life without these uh, disruptions human life will be very plain but in spite of all these negative and pessimistic thoughts some shapes of beauty are there to heal us okay some shapes of beauty includes sun moon uh, anything which is there in nature man made it could be man made it could be given by god as well students the poet sees the tree whether young or old as a symbol of protection 
Nature through the trees showers us on the blessings of shade, protection from heat, intense light of the sun and rain. I hope it's clear. Students, let's move ahead. For simple sheep and such as daffodils, with the green world they live in and clear reels, that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season, the mid forest brick, rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms, and such too is the grandeur of the dooms. Students, simple ship suggests divine beauty. How? I'll tell you. See, lambs and sheep are envisioned as the embodiments or representatives of innocent and serene beauty. Jesus Christ was a shepherd and was seen surrounded by his flock of sheep, his followers. The poet has made specific reference to the sheep as symbol of divine beauty. Students here, uh, such are daffodils with the green world they live in. The poet wants to say that nature's beauty is at its best in the surroundings of meadows and pastures which provide the life support to all plants and animals. No living creatures can be happy away from nature and it is in this green world that they find the true joy and happiness of life. By clear reels, the poet says, rivers and streams which are the natural source of water are the elixir of life. These water bodies create a beautiful sight and provides cooling effect which provides respite to the human beings during hot season. Students, by the mid-forest break, the poet wants to say that nature is beautiful in all its aspects. And we human being can take, um, we can enjoy beauty in the thick forest as well, where plants bloom. Okay, different kinds of uh, flowers bloom. Okay, it spreads scent uh, in the surrounding. Okay, which is beautiful thing in its own. Students, now comes the very important line from the examination point of view. That is grandeur of the dooms. See, it implies. Growth and decay march hand in hand in nature. Whatever is there in nature that has to die. Okay? The poet sees beauty in the magnificent decay and death of these beautiful creations of nature. Students, this line is very important because it says life is a blend of warmth and coolness, growth and decay. Every season, every aspect of life contrasts with the other and has its own charm and beauty. The lines beautifully brings to light these contrasting aspects of life. Let's move ahead. We have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read, an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven's brink. Students, here the mighty dead refers to those great men and warriors who glorified death by embracing it most gracefully. And students, beauty can be seen not only in birth and growth but also in a magnificent death. Let's see this line. Lovely tales have we heard or read. It says, a glorified and magnificent death gets recorded in the leaves of history, leaving an indelible imprint on it. It remains an everlasting source of motivation to all those who read and hear about such great men who achieved glory in death. Let's see the second last line. Endless fountain of immortal drink. Now here, students... Beauty in all aspects, whether in growth or in decay, is a perennial or eternal source of motivation. It is an endless fountain from where we can drink the immortal elixir of life. It means the beauty which we get from all these things, 
okay be it death of somebody or blooming flower it never dies it is like eternal fountain the last line pouring unto us from the heavens brink it says beauty is the greatest gift of god to human beings which has been showered upon us from the heavens above the poet uses the image of a perennial fountain which pours forth bounties on earth in the form of immortal drink from the heavens above the sun the moon the trees the sheep the daffodils and the green pastures and clear rivers are images and reflections of the bounties of beauty on earth which god has bestowed on us students by this we have completed the poetry let's see the literary devices those are used in this poem the first one is metaphor and i hope you all know what is it it means comparison between two things without the use of like or as the first one is bower quiet it means shady part in the garden sweet dreams it means happy dreams reading a flowery band it means connecting to nature paul a covering paul means a covering like a shroud endless fountain or immortal drink of immortal drink it refers to the deeds of great men and women that are a source of inspiration for the people of all times the list of beautiful things like sun moon uh, trees etc these are metaphor and symbol of nature next literary device is alliteration and in alliteration consonant sound will be repeated okay in this poetry there are three novel nature sound of n is repeated here next is cooling covert sound of k cooling and covert sound of k is repeated here next the last one is band to bind sound of b band b bind is repeated therefore it is alliteration remember students had it been vowel sound that is a e i o u the literary device would have been assonance let's move to the next device that is imagery now imagery means to use such words which makes us imagine those things in our mind and here in the poem the poet uses flowery band shady boon clear reels daffodils in the green world grandeur of doom cooling covert endless fountain of eternal drink to make us imagine these uh, these uh, things vividly let's move to the fifth one and that is symbol symbol is an object representing another to give an entirely different meaning which is much deeper and significant and in this it is simple ship which refers to mankind as christ is considered the shepherd who leads human souls out of the dark world to sins and temptations next one is transport epithet and it is an adjective describing a noun the epithet is transferred to something else in the sentence for example a hot cup of tea it is not cup which is hot but it is the liquid isn't it so the quality of the liquid has been transferred to cup and here it is gloomy days unhealthy and over darkened ways the last device is oxymoron and in oxymoron two opposite ideas are placed side by side to have an effect and here it is mighty dead students i hope the poetry is clear to you all with literary devices meanings and paraphrasing everything we will meet in the next video till then take care